Good morning, everyone. So this is not so much a story as a kind of report back about a one-to-one -one that blossomed into a good relationship for me. And it's just a reflection on our practices um, of forming relationships through one-to-one -one meetings and gatherings. So this came about actually at the initiative of my partner in this one-to-one -one relationship, Gene Wynn, more so than me. I had been seeing Gene regularly on Ecumenical Ministries of Oregon and Oregon Interfaith Power and Light um, Zoom meetings and on Green Faith meetings and some other spaces too. And I had, I think, in, sent her my email in one of the chats to one of the larger meetings and just said, hey, if you wanted to get together or um, if you have questions about any of this stuff, just let me know. And she ended up reaching out to me, um, asking for a one-to-one -one because unbeknownst to me, she had started worshiping at um, St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church in Milwaukee. And she had identified and was identifying online as a Quaker and a member of the Multnomah Friends meeting. So I thought this was curious and just said, oh, she wants to know something more about the Episcopal Church. She's checking something out. I'll probably end up talking to her about Episcopal Church stuff. But in any event, we made an arrangement to meet at my uh, favorite one-to-one -one meeting spot, Barista here on Northwest 23rd, uh, for coffee. And it turned out she had a lot of questions. Um, and we had a great conversation. It ranged from both our faith histories and our family histories, um, you know, relationships, children. I think a lot of the things that um, make it easier for me to have one-to-ones are knowing that in this faith context, people want to share their faith story. Um, and that's one of the ways of connecting. Um, and it just seems very easy and natural to talk about that stuff, even though it's kind of intimate. Um, and maybe it can be scary for some people, but there's just this openness when people reach out um, in the context of seeking spiritual connection. Um, and so I truly appreciate that aspect of, of this one-to-one -one and most of my one-to-ones for, for that matter in this um, organizing context around faith. Um, so what it turned out, what it, this turned into was Gene wanting to do something specifically at St. John's um, to further promote uh, creation care was what we call it in the Episcopal Church or environmental justice, ecological justice, and racial justice, as we call it in eco-faith recovery. And so we talked about that. And I know the rector, the priest, the head clergy at St. John's um, through Episcopal circles. And she's a lovely woman, Jean Kalashevsky. Um, I've actually had one-to-ones with her as well. So this was a good, you know, relationship and omen from the start. Um, but Jean talked to Jean, and we had another one to one to one on Zoom. And basically, they they wanted me to come over for Earth Care Sunday, which is the day after Earth Day, so last um, April twenty third, and to do both an adult education and to preach at their eight o'clock and ten o'clock services. So I did those things. Um, and the, the thing about the one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one was the trust that they both placed in me. Um, I'm not a preacher. I've preached three times. Um, so Jean didn't even, she, she had a couple suggestions, but she really didn't make anything more than that. And I didn't even get my sermon done until Saturday before. So I didn't have any time to run it by her. It was just like, this is going to be it. And it's going to be fine. Um, and I actually got a lot of inspiration for the sermon on the Saturday morning um, before Sunday. Um, different story. But it all went great. And one of the other things that happened in this was between the services, Gene and I met again for coffee. And so we had another one-to-one -one in between services. And so I talked more to her about the adult forum and what people were looking for in that. I had talked to Jean Kalashevsky about that as well, too. Um, but being there at eight o'clock, having this one-to-one -one between services, and then doing the 10 o'clock and having coffee hour afterwards, it gave me a chance to get to know their community a little bit better and to have a good idea of what they were looking for in the um, adult forum time. So I know this is not one-to-one, -one, but I'm going to add this as part of the story. In the adult forum time, what I did to start was just to have everyone go around the room, introduce themselves, say a little bit about why they were at the meeting, 
um, kind of open-ended, but you know, what were they working on? Was there something in particular that was calling them into this space? And there were about 15 people there. And so the around the room took a half an hour. Um, but when I got to the end of it, I was overwhelmed with how much they were doing already. You know, I was expecting this to be a pretty like searching community and not really having more than a toe dip or, um, you know, any kind of organized ministry around creation care. And so I asked them, have you guys talked to each other before? Have, do you guys know each other's stories? And of course the answer was no, they hadn't. And so my feedback to them from this was do one-to-ones uh, and then do your groups and have your meetings um, form around these relationships of the things you're already doing so that you know each other better and you know how you can connect around this work. Um, and, and so coming out of that, it was just really powerful. We had a great uh, discussion of, the, of their activities. They're interested in becoming a resilience hub. They're doing some quiet work on that already. Um, and I was able to give them some resources um, and an offer of further help down the line. Um, but the, the bottom line is from this one meeting that I expected to go one way about a personal journey of faith turned into this community relationship um, with St. John's and a personal relationship with my new friend, Gene Wynn. But it's just a reminder that one-to-ones are an incredibly powerful way to connect. And they're absolutely worth the time, whether you're reaching out or whether you're being reached out to, I encourage you all to do one-to-ones as often as you can. And that's my story. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Uh, Ecoface practice number two engages us in developing relationships to consciously awaken the power among 